Tonight, Nicola Sturgeon has quit. Does that mean Scottish independence is more or less likely as a result? And which political party is most likely to benefit? To discuss that and much more, we're in rugby this evening. In the famous public school of the same name, which has been going strong since the 1500s, this constituency has swung between Labour and the Conservatives, but has been under Tory control for over a decade now. Welcome to Question Time. <laughs> On our panel tonight, Robert Jenrick, the UK government's Minister for Immigration. He was elected to Parliament in 2014, winning the Newark by-election. He since served as Housing Secretary under Boris Johnson and was in the health team in the Liz Truss government. Stephen Kinnock is Labour's shadow on immigration. The Welsh MP and son of the former Labour leader, Neil, has represented Aberavon since 2015. He worked at the World Economic Forum before that. If anything of consequence has happened in Scottish politics over the last several decades, then Ruth Wishart has no doubt written and spoken about it. She's been a broadcaster, journalist and commentator across the media scene and is also a long-time supporter of Scottish independence. Lionel Shriver says she's lost friends over her political views, but she does have an army of fans for being an award-winning author of her 17 books most notable. So far is We Need to Talk About Kevin. She's written for many newspapers and is now a regular columnist for The Spectator. And Ian Hislop has been editor of Private Eye for over 30 years, the best-selling magazine that lampoons and investigates in equal measure. He's also been a team captain of TV's <clears throat> second best current affairs panel show. Have I got news for you since it began in 1990? to our panel, to our audience here, which tonight, because we are in rugby, reflects electoral support for our political parties here in England. And of course, good evening to all of you watching at home. Every Thursday night, Question Time trends on social media, so why not join in? Let's hear what you've got to say and what you're thinking about it all. So let's take our first question tonight, which is from Simon Rush. Does Nicola Sturgeon resigning as First Minister mean the end of Scottish independence? Ian, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, obvious first person to come to. <laughs> um, it's I an think, opinion, and that's all we can have. OK, um, I think, on the whole, um, this side of the border, Nicola Sturgeon gets a fairly easy ride um, in terms of uh, coverage, and a lot of the um, uh, tributes to her uh, seem to me well over the top and not terribly well informed. I mean, she said three weeks ago that uh, she had plenty in the tank and that she was nowhere near quitting. Then she quit. Um, that makes her a standard politician, not a saint. Um, and I do think that um, uh, in terms of independence, I'm sure the movement will go on. There are plenty of people here who'll take it on. Um, I think what we'll lose is the cult of personality, which I think will be a good thing. I think it'd be a good thing for Scotland. And I think it'd be a good thing for everyone else. I mean, Do you think it makes independence more or less likely? Do you um, I think it makes it slightly less likely because, you know, during Covid she was on the telly every night. She had a pre presidential style and she had the advantage of having a British Prime Minister who was, you know, an old Etonian Brexiteer, twice. Now, she hasn't got that. So the narrative that everything in Scotland is the fault of English public school boys, it won't wash anymore. Um, and her own loan scandal, I know We've got a dodgy loan scandal at the BBC, but uh, there is a dodgy loan scandal with the SNP. There's the ferries. You staggering, staggering waste of money, and there will be an inquiry, I'm sure. There are real issues in Scotland that haven't been addressed at all. And I think, with her gone, they may now be addressed. So that's Ruth, my opinion. Ruth? Well, how much of that can I disagree with in two sentences? Um, First of all, um, you, you said that Nicola Sturgeon got a, a, an easy ride from the, from the media down here. That's a load of cobblers, to use a, um, a technical phrase, because, you know, I was reading... Yeah, I recognise it. I was... <laughs> I'm sure. I was reading the papers on the way down on the train today, and um, w one paper, which I won't name because I've only just bought it for the first time today, called her that bloody woman. Um, and that bloody woman was, you know, was what they used to call Mrs Thatcher. Nicholas Sturgeon loathed and detested Mrs Thatcher. I think you're right about one thing. Uh, I think the cult of personality is not good for politics. But if you remember before uh, Nicholas Sturgeon, there was Alex Salmond. And Alex Salmond, when he uh, left politics, or he didn't leave politics, but when he left the leadership of the, of the SNP, everybody said, who on earth could replace Alec? 
and Nicola came along and... Well, no... except, hang on, I mean, Nicola was very much there side by side with Alex, and, she... and that's not the situation now. And the question is, does Nicola Sturgeon resign? Well, he's not the, the most the... distinguished figure mean... in Scottish <laughs> politics to look back on, is he? Does Nicola Sturgeon me resigning mean the end of Scottish independence, or certainly does well, it make it less likely? Well... What's your answer to that? I, th I, think, it, I think it will have an impact. Um, and but what do you think the... that impact will be? Well, f just if I, I could just elaborate very briefly, um, the... All the commentators from the unionist parties have said that you know this is a, this is glad tidings of great joy, and um, and they're they're all dancing on the political grave of Nicola Sturgeon and uh, various people, including some of uh, your colleagues, have said things like you know this is a great gift for the Labour Party. I don't think that's true because if you look at the demographics in Scotland, there's only one age group now which unhappily as my age group, there's only one age group yeah, Ruth, in, in which the is you hostile. You've not answered the question yet. I, well, I am answering the Well, question. are you? I haven't heard it. Does, it. does it mean the end of Scottish independence, or no. at least does it make it less likely? No, it doesn't mean the end of Scottish independence, and I don't think it makes it less likely. I think there's going to be a period during which, uh, a period of turmoil inevitably until a new leader is picked. But no, because of what I was trying to say in, in response is because um, Almost every age group in Scotland is pro-independence. I don't. I think that will continue. I think the independence movement's got its own momentum. Robert. Well, I don't know is the answer. As a were you glad to a, see as a, as a unionist, I hope that it does have uh, an impact on the cause. I think, uh, without question, Nicola Sturgeon was is a very significant figure in Scottish politics and and public life. Um, but I think she rather like. Um, you heard from Ian, she leaves behind her no shortage of problems which uh, her and the SNP have failed to tackle. You do see in Scotland today life expectancy falling. It's the lowest of any of the nations of the United Kingdom. You see education standards falling when once we look to Scotland as having some of the highest educational standards and what you was see the response? drug death soaring what was the response in government when she resigned because it took a lot of people by surprise were you cheering or were you thinking no, oh, I, 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 not I, worried I, about who's coming no, next? i don't think anyone was cheering i think people and anyone who serves in office whether that's in uh, the cabinet or leading a devolved administration can understand that whilst it's an enormous privilege to hold these positions it does carry with it some burden particularly if you're your family and loved ones. So I think I and others understand why Nicola Surgeon might want to move on. But what, what we would like to see in government is that this new phase that Scottish politics now moves into is one which is more unifying than the very divisive one that we've lived through since the referendum. And that we in Westminster, as the government of the United Kingdom, can work as productively and constructively as possible with the Scottish government whether that's led by the SNP or anybody else, to tackle the issues that actually matter okay. to the public in Scotland and not be distracted by these okay. constitutional questions which have just proved incredibly divisive. Man there in the blue suit. I share the view with uh, a former Lord Advocate that the Treaty of Union as an international treaty is in perpetuity and cannot be broken in any event, so independence should constitutionally never happen. OK, what are we in the blue sweater? I think, I think when you look at the, the planning and all the discussion that's gone on, I do question whether they actually have a vision of how it would look to be um, separated from the UK. Is it the SNP you're talking about? In the SNP. And I think, I think they, there isn't one. I'm not seeing a clear one. Okay. Stephen? I, uh, Nicola Sturgeon was an impressive politician, or is. I mean, I'm not talking about the past tense, but as a leader. And, you know, and the impact and she, on independence? And, and she gave a, a, a gracious and thought provoking speech yesterday. I don't think it will make a huge amount of difference, to be frank, because I think support for independence is drifting away in Scotland. Uh, the realisation of the people of Scotland is that. Politics is about much more than one single issue, one obsession about one particular narrative. It is about the cost of living crisis. It's about the National Health Service. It's about uh, antisocial behaviour. It's about the bread and butter issues that really matter to people. And I'm afraid that Nicola Sturgeon's single-minded obsession with that one issue, the SNP's single-minded obsession, 
has distracted them, as the government of Scotland, from getting on with the people's priorities. And what I really hope is that we will see uh, nationalism as a cause withering on the vine, because in the dangerous and turbulent world in which we live, we need politicians who bring people and communities together, okay. not constantly dividing. And the one thing I would say is at least uh, Nicola Sturgeon had the self-awareness to resign when she realised that she was becoming an electoral liability. What I hope now is that Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of the UK, will do the same so that we can have a general election and get this <laughs> awful government out of the way so that Labour can take over and get our country uh, back on track. I'll let you come back in a minute. I can know you want to come in. Let me just ask, are there any... Any people here in this audience, I appreciate that we are in England, but who are supportive of Nicola Sturgeon's view and of the SNP? Obviously, if we were in Scotland, we would see a, a, a fair few hands. But, it, but here, nobody. OK. Um, let me bring Lionel in. She's not spoken. And then I'll come back to you, Ruth, I promise. Lionel. Well, I think this is a blow for Scottish nationalism, but uh, I don't think we should forget that it's also, uh, and importantly, a blow for radical trans activism which is really what brought her down. Uh, I thought that her resignation, uh, while fulsome, was disingenuous, uh, that uh, suddenly, whereas four months ago she was raring to go on to the next election, uh, suddenly she was too exhausted. Uh, I find that dishonest because it was clear that things were going badly for her, and most importantly, this a gender, gender self ID bill was wildly unpopular in, in Scotland uh, as well as in the rest of the UK. And I've, I would have admired her more if she had simply acknowledged that and said, this is not going my way, this is bringing down my party. Uh, and obviously it had cross-party support at Holyrood. Yes, but it did not have popular support. It had very little popular support. Mm -hmm. And... Um, about and I just, I, I, have to, I have to say, I, as a woman, I find the I'm simply too tired uh, reason for quitting uh, a bit girly. OK, yeah. Ruth, you'll be desperate. Let me get the audience. I promise I am going to let you come in. I promise. Let me just hear a bit more of the audience. Yes, the woman there in the white shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things that scares me the most is, yet again, the headlines are about a politician stepping down rather than the important issues like the state of our National Health Service and immigration at the moment. I'm sure Nicola Sturgeon will agree that there's more important things to talk about on national news than the fact that she's stepping down and someone else is just going to take over. OK. Ruth, you're desperate to come back in. I Please am, because it, it, all of the, the reaction to this and across the media, uh, certainly across the, the, the English media, has been that um, the Scottish National Party and the government who are in government in Scotland, and I'm not a member of any party, but the Scottish National Party who are in government in Scotland keep being accused of being obsessed with independence. I mean, the party was founded in order to get independence for Scotland. It seems very strange that people think that a party founded to get independence is obsessed with getting independence. I mean, that's its raison d'etre. That was why it, it came about. And Lionel, I mean, too girly, come on. I mean, I, do, I happen to agree with you on GRR, and I happen not to agree with Nicola Sturgeon, as it happens. But, you know, when Jacinda had Hearn, uh, uh, Hearn uh, resigned, well and, done, and, yeah. and, uh, and thank you, <laughs> and Nicola Sturgeon resigned, um, both of them went at a time of their own choosing, which I think is unusual for a politician, and it's quite important that, it, uh, that they were able to do that and they were able to trust their own instincts and go at a time of their choosing. I think that matters. And I don't think it was anything to do with them being women. I venture to suggest that some male MPs, uh, we mentioned one um, in passing, Mr Johnson, had to be dragged cricking and screaming out of number 10. I mean, Maybe the male ego had something to do with it, and maybe the female ego is a little less fragile. Well, she survived eight years and seven as deputy. She didn't suddenly feel tired, did she? No, she didn't suddenly feel tired, but I think... She the also left saying, classically said, most people in Scotland agree with me that um, there should be independence. Now, as a definition of most... What are the polls at the moment? Just well, over the, the 50, polls, 50? The poll, Well, I'm glad you asked me that because the polls have just just moved uh, to 47 to 53 in favour of right. no. But but a, but a month so it's ago, not, it's not a huge majority. But a, it? no, it's not. And I think she recognises, and I think most people, including me, recognise that there has to be a, a significant. Um, majority in favour mm. of independence before we can contemplate again. I get that. I really do get that. But okay. but it's been 50-50 for maybe 
the last six or seven years now, certainly since 2014. And let's remember that when David Cameron went to the country with a breakfast, a breakfast? <laughs> Probably that too. Adults but when, breakfast, when he went, but he went, when he, when I was waiting went, for someone to say that. Yeah. Yeah. A dog's breakfast. Yeah, well, he had two referendums, both of which were utterly <laughs> useless. Yes, but the point okay. is that he went to on a Brexit re referendum on 36.9% of the population. That was the, the, the percentage that elected him. And now, um, you know, Nicola Sturgeon has won eight uh, elections in a row, and suddenly that's not mandate enough? No, no, right. but it's not the elections winning. It's, it's the number of people who agree with independence as the only issue. And if it's 50-50, you're going to end up with a Brexit situation in Scotland over the single most important issue. And, you know, it's, it's been terrific in the UK, Brexit, you've probably noticed. OK. Um, okay. I get and it. so we've got another union to break up. All right. I'm going to move on.